okay in the last class we studied about tcp uh, we couldn't complete the discussion so we'll study the remaining part of tcp we'll touch upon udp and then study tcp attacks okay that's the agenda for today so this is what we have completed in the last class okay and today we'll uh, study the flow control very little about it not much then we'll look at tcp only very very top level and then spend time on tcp level attacks okay before that i will repeat what we have studied because tcp is most important protocol apart from of course ip okay most of the application use tp tcp today all right okay so we we have seen that ip does not give any re reliability okay it is not designed for it because you know it's designed as a simple packet transmission protocol which transfers protocol with the best effort because that the time when it was designed nobody knew right what is going to be the future of networking and link speeds were low links were highly erroneous at that time about 30 years back but the beauty of the technology is that it it continued uh, to serve the purpose and it became most popular technology in between some other technologies came like atm frame relay and many others but ip survived the beauty is that that it simply says that i have ip packet it defines the format of IP packet, in the, it defines the header, it defines what IP address should look like, and defines also how packet should be routed. Now these packets can contain anything. There is no restriction from designer's perspective that what this payload can be. It could be voice, data, file, music, your IPL matches, or whatever, contents corresponding to anything. And other end, you receive the same and use the logic application logic and replay it okay so there's a beauty but it is not designed for security okay and it's also not so secure inside security is not designed for confidentiality it's not designed for integrity it's not designed for authentication it's not designed for availability So availability is essentially, uh, you can say reliability. Okay, so none of these features were thought of when it was designed and that also is a weakness of IP protocol. Some may consider this a strength of IP is that can be, it can carry anything, right? Had they designed all security levels inside, things IP might not have become so popular. All right, like your PST and phones, etc. They are designed for security, but very restrictive in nature, right? Okay, then we looked at the concept of uh, ports because you know IP address gives address of the machine. Okay, okay, within machine there are many browsers, many applications. Right? Within a browser there are many windows. Okay, you in, in a browser, you open multiple windows and each is communicating with different servers. Okay, and so, so there must be way to when the data is coming to machine, it should be routed to appropriate window. For example, there are multiple windows are there in a browser or there may be some other application like email application. So data is just nothing but IP packet, right? That may contain, that contains TCP or UDP. It has got to go to appropriate app or process right and that is done through ports when you write a new application then you know it will use some of the ports okay which are free at that point in time okay all right so we have seen that we have demultiplexing when ip packet comes this way it has got to go to one of the multiple processes right and when multiple processes are creating traffic they have got to go on the same link. But IP packets may be different, right, for each one of these. 
it will go over the same wire. Okay, that's called demultiplexing. So again, ports are used to do multiplexing and demultiplexing, right? And we have seen the concept of then uh, socket. Socket is nothing but I combination of IP and port. In order to define a TCP connection, we need IP address of client machine, port number of client machine, IP address of destination machine and port that is being used on the other hand. And of course, because ports are used for TCP and UDP, you have to also define the protocol. So these five things, IP address of the source machine, IP address of destination and port address of source machine, port address of destination and TCP slash UDP defines very specific connection between two machines. All right. So we have seen that. All right. This X this shown here. Same thing is depicted here. Okay. And then we have seen the sockets for uh, TCP is different from sockets for UDP. If you're interested to learn more about it, please uh, read it from the book. Any book on networking will cover this. All right. So we have to create a socket, send and receive, and close the socket. All right. Then we start a discussion about once we learned about multiplexing, demultiplexing, we learned up, we started learning about TCP. Okay. All right. The TCP, uh, sorry, transport layer. Transport layer is basically two pop popular protocols at this level are TCP and UDP. But there are many others, right? But TCP, UDP are most commonly used. Okay. And then uh, it, so only common thing about this is that they provide end to end service and both use ports for multiplexing, demultiplexing, right? Okay. Now, Application need not to worry about uh, you know how to create IP packets etc etc right. An application has just the data to send. It can create data either as a byte stream, stream of bytes, okay, or it can create as a block of data. Okay? All right. So TCP uh, is based on byte stream model, and UDP is based on the other model. All right. Okay, all right. So what happens is that TCP uh, data comes from uh, application. It goes into as a stream. It goes into a buffer, and then from that part of that data is taken and put inside a TCP packet. And then appropriate source and destination headers are added, and few other control fields are added and sent to next layer, which is IP layer. IP layer puts its uh, header and then send it to data link layer, and then it goes from one up to another hub. Okay, all right. So we have seen all that. Okay, the TCP says that everything in between is unreliable, and we have to just create reliable service over unreliable network. When we say reliable service, then we'll have to think of many things, right? I mean, packets loss must be recovered. So packets can be dropped by IP, right? So it has to recover from packet loss then out of sequence packets may arrive because ip does not say packets will arrive in order so sequencing of packet is required all right okay all right so these points we have seen right all right now then we have seen that it provides of course, reliability, ordering of packet, and byte stream abstraction. Okay. And TCP node is point to point network between two endpoints. TCP will run. TCP will not run on intermittent routers. The routers in between will not, will only look at IP because their role is only to route the packet. They will look at only IP address. Beyond IP, beyond IP packet, you know, I mean, it may contain TCP, IP packet may contain, that is not its role. Router will not look at what is inside. It just looks at IP header and pushes it to some next node, right? 
okay is a full duplex it means that between a and b data will communicate both hands it cannot be one way why it can't be one way because is a byte stream it a sends to b byte stream b receives the byte stream and if something is dropped in between then b will request resend it so it means that data has to go this request data or control data has got to go from b to a as well right so it's a full duplex okay and then cumulative x right your mother is sending five packets of you know sweets now you have option of calling her after you receive each packet or you have option of calling after receiving maybe some number of packets right when you say acknowledgement for box number 3 that it means that box number 1 to have already been received that's how tcp works okay pipelining is that okay when your mother is sending 10 boxes full sweets by courier she will not wait for the second box to she will not hold the second box until she receives acknowledgement for first box okay when you receive it call her that i have received then if she send second then it's not efficient protocol she can send all 10 one after other and you will acknowledge from other end right okay similarly tcp does not wait for acknowledgement but it can cumulatively send acknowledgements and lastly we say is a connection oriented it means that see both hand have some information right like sender like your mother and you you are receiving packets she is sending packets she uh, will pack she she has a connection only with you right okay and you are very well defined with your port number or whatever and she will send first box to you that she know she has sent first box okay and you are ready to receive it you received it first box right then you will send ack for first box and then she receives a ack and send the second box and third box and so on right so there is a understanding between the two and you are maintaining and she is also maintaining some information that's called connection oriented okay so there is handshaking between you and your mother similarly handshaking between tcp client and tcp server or this is okay a server and client both are using tcp flow control you know when your mother is sending uh, boxes of sweets because mother is full of love for you right they will think that iit mandi does not provide great food uh, although she may not know that you are becoming obese here but you know uh, after receiving a one box you have not consumed first box and then you have received second box okay then she have sent third box then we'll say, what we'll say look i have got enough don't send more okay i cannot consume it i cannot keep it i don't have space similarly server or receiver when when when, uh, when uh, your machine is sending packets to a server and sending it very fast pace server will say look stop reduce i cannot handle so much right that's called flow control okay any question up to this point no monologue no sir okay all right let's move ahead then okay of course application we have seen and this concept shows that if your mother your mother is here you are at here and she says one box and you say okay i received it and then she will send second once she receives this act she send second work this is called stop and wait protocol other protocol is she continuously send packets okay and you receive it whenever you receive you just send act okay this is called pipeline operation you know your she is not waiting for your acknowledgement she she will send one after the so no this is done in network because if you do this way then it's very slow operation okay so a lot of bandwidth is available right and you are unnecessarily wasting the bandwidth you continuously send and whenever receiver receives it will act it if it doesn't receive it will continue act for the previous one it has received right so very simple protocol 
this concept we have studied. So how does it happen is that let's, in byte stream abstraction, we have seen that sender sends a stream of bytes, okay. A byte is of course 8 bits and this guy receives it. It's like milk flowing or uh, water flowing in the pipe, right, okay. Now, but it's not that simple. It has to, sender has to, has a buffer and where sending process will keep this uh, byte streams and uh, you know if this is the first byte then it will go into a segment segment is something that goes as a part of tcp payload this is a tcp payload right okay now note that this tcp packet size is not fixed so now there are two ways right tcp will say okay this is my area available i will wait for you know this area to get filled in then i will send other approach is that you know it's like you know truck going from some one place to another it will say all right until truck is full it will not go the second approach is that you know I mean, why wait because application on the other hand is waiting for you know all the stuff all the bits then just send it as you know after some time so tc there's a reason tc packet is never fixed right but anyway the part of that data that goes in tcp we call it segment segment reaches to other end it's take and then same thing is done that white stream is formed and passed on to receiver right now what happens there very very question what happens is something is lost happens when few bytes are lost how do you how do you know about bytes being lost right okay all that things are important and then we have to work on that right so now the byte stream model says that application generates stream of bytes it uses tcp so these bytes go as a payload of tcp packet it goes to ip so whole tcp packet goes into ip packet so ip packet is formed okay so this is the ip packet uh, payload of ip and this ip header it goes to other end over ethernet whatever and finally these bytes are delivered and this is the abstract view of what happens right from sender to receiver and in fact part of this goes here it's like this this goes the tcp data and then header is added and goes to other end but this part is taken out and delivered to host simple so we call this part a segment that comes from app then tcp header is added then it goes inside ip packet ip is uh, data then ip header is added it goes to other end simple okay and this one we have seen note that here there is something called receiver window this is for the flow control okay like when you are receiving laddu uh, you know sweet packet you will say you know reduce the speed right so i have capacity only for three for example or two or one and you will put the number here and then when mother sees it she will reduce the rate at which she will send you sweets okay all right very simple okay now this is where we were right last class okay now what will happen is that this is the data stream that is going from one application to another so tcp views data is unstructured there's no structure in it right there's a stream of data but it has to create some structure because it has to send this to tcp okay so it, it so it decides on the segment size okay and then these segments are not numbered like this the first segment it won't say number one or number two segment and so on it looks at at the first byte of the segment all right so if file size is uh, or is called sequence number okay okay the file size is 5 500000 bytes at segment size is 100 the first byte of data is numbered 0 so this is sequence number 0 all right 
and this one here is sequence number second segment first byte sec sequence number 1000 all right and so on so note that here bytes are numbered okay now of all right and this sequence number starting sequence number okay like you know if the second segment is going in tcp it will insert in the sequence number field this one 1000 if first segment is going it will insert zero and so on right this is how it happens okay now what may happen is that now if mallory in between knows the first segment starts with zero and then if she is trying to spoof this and insert spurious or uh, some some her own bits in the connection then she she knows that you know tcp connection is started and this is a sequence number start with zero that's the reason sequence number we never start with zero is called start with some number which is randomly picked up okay it's called isn initial sequence number okay all right so now if the messages are going from alice to bob and say she says hello server okay this is a message this will go into tcp as a segment then this initial sequence number for example here is 50 then tcp in the tcp head header if wherever the sequence field is we'll say 50 okay all right okay so this is uh, so when this segment is being sent or is an initial sequence number is uh, this one isn and this was the first segment this is the second segment so second segment starts with after k bytes then we'll say that isn or the starting or the sequence number for this is isn plus k isn is initial sequence number now isn is for a session okay it may it may consist of sending multiple such segments right for every session whenever you start tcp session it a random isn number is chosen all right any question all right so this sequence number if you look at tcp header this of course is data the tcp this the tcp header you will have sequence number which contains this at number of or so is nothing but sequence number which we discussed just now okay all right now for here you can get the same thing that seek let's assume that uh, okay let, let me just expand it huh? okay so these are the as part of stream these green ones are ek has received so you don't care about it right the these are the ones where these have been sent but acknowledge and has not come okay and these are the ones that is to be sent blue ones are to be sent right okay now the sequence the window size of course this okay because now this is a maximum number of packets you can receive when your mother is sending data right okay now this for this acknowledgement has not come so window will not move now so now the isn so sorry the sequence number will be this because you have to send this now all right all right and acknowledge you know that there is something called acknowledgement field also in tcp that will give the acknowledgement of the one here it basically says that now i am expecting the next number it has received all green ones the last number plus one is the something that's expecting now okay that's the theory okay okay so the sender sends a packet and data starts with sequence number x and packet contains b bytes so it will be x x plus one x plus two up to x plus b minus one all right now when it is received the receiver will send acknowledgement all right so now uh, when it has 
not necessarily it will uh, acknowledgement for the last byte it has received up to what bytes it has received properly it will send the acknowledgement okay right so if it has received in order received bytes up to y byte number y then it will send acknowledgement as y plus 1 it means that everything before this has been received okay so normally what happens if sequence number is x length of the segment is b it it will send acknowledge receiver will send acknowledgement for x plus b okay if the initial sequence number for sender is x plus b and length of the segment is b then receiver if receives properly will send x for x plus b and so on and so forth right all right and apart from that there are tcp flags okay they are ac ac basically when we say that this tcp packet is also informed apart from sending data let's assume that bob is sending it to alice it can also say that i have received something like if this egg bit here is set then it can say yes i have received something and then it will tell what all he, it has received right okay okay all right yeah then there is second flag is called sin if this flag is set it means that this whole this packet is used for starting a connection when two ends want to finish the communication and say that let's now close this flag is called fins flag is set okay and then similarly you know suppose power goes off or something happens and any machine can say okay immediately let's break the connection they, then it's called rst okay i would like you to go through it uh, you know reading more about it from the book okay so tcp connection is basically three way handshaking so and then uh, is uh, tcp connection for example is created between ip machine at ip address a tcp port 1 to destination machine i which has ip address ip b and tcp port b so now we'll have to create first connection then send the data and then close the connection okay so it's something like this the client chooses a sequence number x which is a random number okay now because it's creating it's starting a connection then it sends sin or synchronize packet to server this is the client the server it sends a sin packet it essentially means what this flag is set here okay okay and then it defines a sequence number x where is the sequence number flag Kill this one it said this one as x server will receive this it knows that the client is trying to establish a connection okay it will respond back okay i am ready to accept the connection it will respond with back with synac okay synac is another field here okay in tcp one of the uh, okay just a minute okay sin with the sin set, uh, flag is set with and also x x is also set yeah just a minute There's some okay both sin and x flags will be set okay okay sends back sin x and then it also randomly selects a starting connection because you know between the two and one connection this way another connection is other way right so it will also is choose its initial sequence number y and now it acknowledges that has received sequence number x and says that x is for x plus one it means that now i am expecting 
a packet coming from x plus 1 okay and then when client receive this it will send x that now okay, of course i accept your sequence number and x packet i will receive will be y plus 1 and i thanks for accepting the sequence number my sequence number so next packet that i will send the first byte will have number x plus 1 okay this is how it is any question now the connection is established It's like you know you and your mother. This is you, you it's your mother, and she'll uh, you said okay, mom, send me sweets, okay. And my number right now is say three. Sequence number is three. She will say okay, fine. I now the packet I will receive will be packet number four or sorry byte number four, okay x plus one, and my number is say ten. Okay, then you will send, okay, fine. Uh, I am acknowledging that. Now, please start sending something from number y plus 1 or 11. And so on, right? So, this is how it works. And then data transmission can start. Okay, any question? Okay, so these are details you can. Look at it. Okay. Now, what will happen? Once this connection is done, okay, first phase was connection setup that we have seen, right, in previous slide. Now, data communication starts. And let's look at it in detail. Okay, so what will the first one? Client will send the data whose length is A. Is a segment data segment with length a. a. It means a bytes are there. Okay. And then its initial sequence number. The first byte will have address because we agreed for x is initial sequence number. Its sequence number is x plus one. So this byte has sequence number. This, this sorry, this stream is starting or this segment is starting with number x plus one. This byte has number x plus one. And it is acknowledging y plus one. Now you send something, server will start sending from y plus one onwards, right? Okay, because A is sending segments in the, this direction, B is send, sending or server is sending segments in other direction. So now this server will send a data with segment size of B and initial number of that is y plus 1 okay a size is of course b b bytes okay all right and it is acting what x plus 1 plus a because it has read all this correctly and it's acting for x plus 1 plus a bytes right okay and so on so forth so this way now it will send another set of packet another segment with size data length c and it will act for it has received this segment from here the act number is y plus one plus b and and then so it's acting for that and so on right so in this way it will go on okay and if something is lost in between if something is lost then as the recipient will not send act for the last received one okay because something in between is lost okay so it so if server does not receive the act although it has sent the data so it can find out that i am receiving act for previously sent byte so it should then server will send bytes from the last correctly sent byte as per receiver onwards okay all right So there are various scenarios here and you can read it from the book, right? At the end, when your TCP session between you and server, your machine and server is end, then there are two ways to close the connection. One is using fin, when fin flag is set, 
okay and second is by immediately if connection is to be aborted then rst flag is to be set so it will immediately reset the packet uh, connection okay just a minute okay any question up to this point flow control we have already discussed that sliding window uh, we use here because in tcp segment there is something called window field or w something okay like your mother will you will say okay i can receive only four packets at a time okay so and then you can uh, either side can change the window size depending on how much space they have how much they can consume okay all right so it's like this that there is a window size here like it's shown here for receiver or server this is uh, this is say a and this is b or client and server whatever you can think of so there is always a window size both machines can communicate to each other right so for example when acknowledge this is the data stream when acknowledgement comes is acting up to this point it means that now all this has been received correctly okay then there is sequence number which is the next byte that i am going to send so it corresponds to something here okay so this packet a has, has sent this packet means that now this up to this point it has been sent okay now this has this has been sent but has not been act by receiver so this must be buffered in a until b sends the act for that okay all right so this is the window it means now these packet these bytes are to be sent now okay so window always has packets that have been sent that is not act or that is to be sent okay as soon as act, act comes then this windows changes its position and so on so forth right and there is something called window here uh, in the packet okay uh, which says that how much can be it defines the size of this all right so now sender cannot send data beyond this until it receives acknowledgement as soon as it receives acknowledgement this window shifts where is these are the byte stream okay so it works something like this up oh, simulation so this is a other is b a has sent okay multiple segments okay and then act comes okay so all three have been received correctly so this window shifts now all right now fourth has been sent and received properly so now window will further shift right but fifth has been lost in between and then the uh, sender doesn't know the fifth has been lost right okay and it will then send six and seven so you note that if you go back note that for six and seven window doesn't move it remains the same okay now from that how does this know that a know that you know it has to resend packet number five or segment number five. How does it know? Anybody? Because this guy will not send X. Okay, B will not send X, right? Okay. So or okay. So what will happen as a result of that it will again send five six seven so look at this way or if b is sending act then it will send act for previously properly received packet 
Okay, here fifth is lost. So it will send X for up to four. Okay, all right. So uh, it will continue to send X for four. Although it has received many uh, spec number six and seven. So this guy now, just a minute. Will send again five and six and so on. And then it will shift the its window. Okay, all right. So please go through this simulation and read uh, about it, and you will come to know. Uh, you will learn about it, right? UDP is similar, uh, excepting that it's, it's not connection oriented, it's just uh, based on datagram abstraction. The application will create a packet, you know, kind of a small segment of data, it's not a stream, it will pass on to UDP layer, UDP layer will put this in its uh, packet and send it across, right? So only thing UDP does is that defines ports. So that's it, right? So there's no reliability, there are no ordering guarantees, it's the best, best effort. It's very similar to IP, it's just IP plus port numbers. That's it. So it's a very fast because there is no three-way handshake similar to TCP. Some application like video streaming application may want it. Okay, attacks on UDP is very simple because there is no sequence number. So attacker just can create UDP uh, packet. It has to know just source port, destination port, source IP number, destination IP number, and just send it. It will be accepted to other end. All right. Now next 10 minutes, let's look at what are the attacks that are possible on to TCP. Okay. The lot, lot of attacks are possible on TCP, right? First thing first is that everything is going unencrypted, right? So this is a TCP packet. Okay, this is the header. And this is a payload. This is nothing but stream or segment, stream segment. Anybody can change data here, right? Mallory can easily change data here. So man in the middle attack is very simple. Okay. Not this what TCP header contains that can also be changed. Okay. So there are large number of attacks are possible. We'll study only these three today. So we don't have enough time. Okay. The first attack is very simple attack is called sin attack. Now this thing we have already studied three way handshake. Okay. So what will happen is that this is a normal process. This, this is a client and the S is server. Client, when it wants, client wants to establish a connection, it sends sin. And now this guy, server here will store, you know, all the data corresponding to this. Because, you know, this is a state machine. Okay, so it will store who has sent me, like, um, all this data like IP address of received packet, port number of received packet, destination number, destination IP number, destination port number, all this stored here. You know, it's a, it's on database or it's a data structure. Okay, and then send this ACK that we have seen, that we do, and this guy server will ACK it, right? Now it's a connected. All right. Now, up to this point, when ACK is received, the data will remain here in this data structures, and then it will move to some other place. Okay. Now, that thing where it will be for half established connection, data remains in some data structure called SYN cache, the one which we discuss here. Okay. So, what will happen now? A is sending, A is a valid sender nice person like Alice sends this SYN packet. Now all the data corresponding to this SYN packet is stored here in cache until this connection is established. 
So receiver will send SYNAC. Okay, the data is will remain here in this cache. When X comes, now connection established. So this thing will be removed. Okay, right? Okay, all right. So you can see this, it goes like this. So it, this thing will remain here. Information about the packet, connection. Okay, and then it goes up. Because this purpose of SYN cache is only for connection establishment. Once connection established, then data goes away. Now let's see the attack. This is the attacker here, Mallory. This is Alice and Bob. This is SYN cache in Bob's machine. Okay, now attacker will send multiple SYN packets. Okay, let's go back. Attacker sends multiple SYN packets, it will full up full the buffer. Now, and it you know, of course, the Bob's machine will send X SYN X, which attacker will not respond to. And possibly it has used multiple IP addresses. So this SYN X have gone to different places apart from uh, uh, attacker, right? So it there no X further X will come from attacker. So now all this data will remain in the cache. And now a valid sender sends something, a connection request, and this hack is full, then data is lost. Okay, now it means that valid sender cannot establish a connection. Okay, same thing is shown here. Please read through this. All right. And to counter it, there's something called SIM cookies. So it says that, okay, I'm not going to have this data structures. This data structure I'm not having, right? So what this will contain, what the, it will only contain IP address of sender, port number of sender, initial sequence number, and so on, right? So it will take this information as a data, okay? So whenever SIM request is received, it will take all this data and then hash it, okay? And then use this as a initial and say that now, okay, this becomes initial, your initial sequence number. That is means uh, Alice's or attacker sequence number, whoever is trying to establish a connection. Okay, so there is no need for this cache, okay? Now when, uh, if the attacker will, of course, when receives this, it will ignore it because, you know, it's using different IP address or it's, or these responses may not come to attacker. But if it comes to genuine one, genuine user, like Alice, she will use this as an initial sequence number. So now Bob's machine will get ISN plus one as a sequence. So she can derive all these things from you know, like IP address, port number, et cetera, et cetera, from ISN. Now, how does it, she can derive? Because the response she receives from Alice machine will, again, the packet will contain all these things, IP address, port number, and ISN plus one. From this, she can, uh, Bob's machine can derive ISN and all these things are visible and she will, uh, he can do hash and compare it with this one. And if matches, then everything is all right. Okay, so in this way, uh, you know, DOS attack can be, uh, using SYN cookies, this attack can be taken care of. Please uh, read through this. Second attack, uh, we'll go through in very short time. We don't have too much time. So we have seen that normal reset, normal, Disconnection of a connection, when connection is to be deleted, normal method is sending finish packet or with packet with finish flag. And then when final act comes, we will say now everything is over. It's like handshake between two. All right, I you will tell your mother there is enough. Now I I am anyway coming home. You stop sending sweets. She will say, okay, all right, I will not send sweets. And you'll say, okay, thank you. So that's the handshake, right? But suddenly something happens and you uh, say that you decide to go to for holidays, then you can say, okay, don't send anything and no other information. Okay, that's called reset. 
when reset flag is set when power goes off in a machine it will send reset before you know anything happens right all right so that will immediately break the connection now attacker can now send the reset packet which is spoofed one to disrupt the connection but in order to do that it has to know the following information source ip address source port number destination ip address destination port number and sequence number now destination ip and destination port is easy to guess because you know it knows attacker will know where the packets are going to and it will use most popular port numbers like port 80 etc but source ports are difficult because it is app related right so it is difficult to guess similar source ip can be guessed so now here it's more of a guessing game by attacker okay all right similarly next attack is hijacking attack where where attacker wants to put is a spurious packet inside this flow of packets it may want to insert its own packet right okay for that again it needs to know source ip address source port number destination ip address destination port number and sequence number so again it has to guess okay and then it can insert right so if it's not able to guess properly and it says that okay my initial sequence number is x plus delta okay and if delta is reasonable it comes within the window receiving window then this will be accepted as injected data by the receiver and then it will fill the remaining ones which once you know sender sends the packets and then it means that now this data is corrupted all right all right so now a uh, uh, mallory can hijack the session here all right okay so there's a summary tcp is very well designed protocol most of the applications use it okay of course what we have studied is very simple version of tcp and more advanced version more efficient versions have come in okay uh, how is little complex because the connection oriented both ends have have got to maintain the state information and one of that is state information that uh, receiver uses is uh, uh, for you know when connections are to be established or half established is uh, syn cache and this syn caches can be manipulated by 2d by sending multiple connection requests so that this cache becomes full and once this becomes full genuine connections cannot be uh established right and then there are other attacks that we have seen using reset packet okay or inject the spoof or spoof the you know some malicious contents in between a sequence of packet that's called tcp session hijacking so that's all we have studied today any question I know I'm going very very fast. You know TCP usually may require three four lectures, but uh, I hope uh, if you read, then you will be able to understand it fully. Because you know we cannot understand attacks on TCP until we understand TCP. So it's kind of too much of the content. Any question? Okay then, thank you.